कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क्स वी आर टेकिंग चैप्टर नंबर वन इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर एनी नेटवर्क वेन एवर वी आर डिजाइनिंग और वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिजाइन देर आर सर्टन एस्पेक्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सो नेटवर्क प्रोटोकॉल्स और अ नेटवर्क यू नो प्रोटोकॉल इज ऑल अबाउट द एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन टू पार्टीज दैट वॉट रूल्स रेगुलेशन दे हैव टू फॉलो so the design goals first thing is reliability that is if some fault is there that is if this uh, link is broken then or the device has failed the whole network should be able to recover from any kind of error faults and failures second thing is resource allocation that is sharing access to a common limited resources because the resources are scarce sometimes what may happen that there are two devices two components one is sending the data at a fast pace the second device is not that compatible that is not able to take in that faster mode so swapping can happen evolvability third thing is that you know the network what you make today has to be thought of future new technologies new techniques will come so we have to have a incremental kind of aspect of design because the protocol will be there different protocols will come we have we will be able to deploy it. and the final thing comes whenever you are dealing in public as a network security comes because here people are involved they are good people they are bad ones so the the network should be able to be able to defend the network as well as the people from any kind of attack whichever is possible so these are certain design goals of network issues so whenever we make a network or we try to design it or we want to learn it understand it so there are certain things like design goals and with the purview of protocols because whatever we are dealing here will be protocols that is the agreed upon some uh, rules and conventions and regulation the reliability is the basic issue and this is one of the very important issue when you are making a network but the reliability is all about the network working correctly and recovering correctly from the failure even if the components themselves are unreliable the components may not be good some of the components for example if we are sending packets packets are nothing but combination of bits so when we are sending the packet as bits what can happen there are various reasons because of this the bits may change bit may be lost packets may be lost so the possibility is that there can be some electrical noise there can be some random wireless signals because there are plenty around there may be some hardware uh, flaw or failure even the software can uh, you know remove the bit or change the bit so how do we fix how do we find these problems and then try to recover from it or fix it so there are two things you have to know about this one is the error detection one is the error correction so these are two techniques error detection and correction techniques here we have parity codes the checksum technique the cyclic redundancy code crc we call it and the hamming code so we are going to discuss all these but for now error detection is all about detecting them for example you are sending 1011 and you got 1001 so this bit is wrong so detection of this bit is error detection but when if you want 1011 then changing the third bit to 1 that is making it actual 1011 is the error correction so error correction involves error de detection and error correction both so all these methods 
we have to add certain redundant information that is the actual data along with the bits so that that bit can be used for finding the errors for example checksum checksum is nothing but the xor of all the bits so this can be used at the destination end there is a uh, one more uh, you know issues which is, which comes under a reliability only is how to find a path through a network because network means means multiple path there will be numerous path how does the packet go from one place to another so this multiple path between the one point to another there may be possibility that some link or routers or even the machines are broken so the network should automatically take decision based on certain certain algorithm that is called as routing routing is all about sending the data from one place to another properly so we have routing algorithm it can be adaptive algorithms non adaptive algorithms in adaptive we have isolated centralized distributed in non adaptive we can have flooding and random walk so when you are real dealing with network in the design issues resource allocation is even a greater issue that is when the network enlarges for example let us take an the analogy of making a road we make road for today traffic but after 10 years the there will be traffic jam because we have not made made this as scalable so scalable is whenever the you know machines will grow the network should also grow the host will grow so the people when they increase when the systems increase there will be demand so one of the one of the way of doing this is statistical multiplexing so this is the way of solving it it is based on statistics of demand whoever wants it just give them for certain time that is you this you see this design this is a kind of a t1 t2 t3 t1 t2 t3 this is a round robin proper timing is given for every three machine okay so this design here in statistical uh, multiplexing we provide or assign the bandwidth dynamically that is we are assigning t1 not like this t1 t2 t3 we are not doing when t1 is uh, wanting then we assign it to t1 it may happen that t2 doesn't require it then t3 is requires it we give it to the, uh, t3 so we are not assigning it permanently but on the basis of the demand okay so basically short term needs are catered one more thing in the resource allocation is flow control because the packet is going from one place to another one point to another one node to another now this what happens if certain uh, in a road some uh, accident happens we have seen in the countries that because of this this kind of traffic jam and accident people were uh, in jam for days so for flow control is when one sender is sending some data some packet and it is sending with full force that is the maybe the throughput and the bandwidth is higher but what about the the other end the other end which is receiving it it may be swamped it may be flooded it will be overwhelmed by the number of packets congestion when we have too many computers too many nodes or too many machines that are sending the traffic and the network is not ready or made such that it can deliver them all for example for a railway reservation for example in india irctc at 11 o'clock for second class at 12 for the air conditioned class previously 4 5 years back it was at 10 o'clock for both the both the you know classes at 10 o'clock the irctc website it it is miracle if you get through it so that is an example of congestion so this is this is how we have to deal with these issues one more aspect is the quality of service people will only accept every the product when the quality is good for example if cricket match is going on who will want that 
an uh, a wicket is taken and you see it after say 5 minutes because the messages you are or the live commentary you are listening and you are watching something different so real time live video we need the timeliness this is the most important thing for example you see here in this picture this is a regular traffic and how this regular traffic changes into the traffic peak this is how the things have changed so here we have flow control congestion and even the quality of service is involved so sometimes quality of service is seen like this how if we if we actually implement it this is the first picture where bandwidth with no quality of service rules applied so this is the way it, it will be in the actual channel but if you apply the qs properly this is the channel which should be like this an ideal channel evolvability so whenever we are dealing with the design issues of networks and the protocols when the network grows there will be different technologies design everything will come you know when 1g came nobody have thought that we will be dealing with 5g we were talking about kbps that time now we are talking only about gbps so all these all these uh, technologies and you know different things are coming so in order to support all this what is the you know if you have a big big problem how do you work with it you try to solve it one by one piece by piece and you don't want to give the implementation also exposed so the best way is to protocol layering that is divide the the network configuration or work into different layers So there, are, there are so many machines. There are thousands and millions of machines. So how to know about them? The idea is, we have the naming service, DNS, domain name server, addressing technique, the IP addresses, all are there. So each layer needs a mechanism to identify the sender and receiver. There is one more thing. When you are sending the packet, the packet is not sent uh, like that. Some layer has to break it. there may be some limitation on the network also so the disassembling transmitting and reassembling has to be done for example this data packet packet 1 is going we have divided it into 3 packet 2 is going going like this packet 3 is going like this okay so this is the first part is disassembling transmitting and finally they have to be reassembled also in the similar manner the way they are sent so this whole criteria or the concept is known as internet working but there are certain issues there are certain challenges because there are different network technologies some of them will not preserve the order for example this is 1 2 3 8 it may be you know you are you may be getting 3 1 2 you don't know the sequence number you have to have a sequence number and every network has a limited size there has to be known that this message say 1 mb for example i'm just giving an example the network can only send 500 kb so you have to divide this 1 mb into 2 500 kb and even more because you have to add headers etc one more issue is security in the network whenever we are saying there are thousands and millions of uh, machines nodes etc so there are chances that there are people who are not good they will pose threats different kind of threats so the security is a very important aspect for example eavesdropping this confidentiality deals with this kind of problems that is if two people are talking why the third person has to listen right there has to be some criteria or stoppage to any hacker or eavesdropper to learn what you are sending and what the other person is receiving there has to be authentication you have to prove that what you are that is prevent someone from impersonating someone else so there has to be proper procedure and process of authentication and even authorization for example how how do you know fake banking website from real one i'll give you an example that phishing uh, attack and this fake banking 
whenever whenever you open the website for example say a bank icici so when you open this you will see that that first website website web screen will be like icii you will enter the username password and it will show you that you have entered the wrong password and, and these credentials and this this uh, screen will go and actual screen will come there now the username password you have entered earlier that will be taken by the attacker okay there are other issues like uh, the examples also that cellular network who is actually using the phone the call is legitimate or not one more thing comes here is integrity that is whether the message what has been sent is what is being received that is for example if you are sending or debiting 100 dollars it should not be altered to dollar debiting say 1000 dollars the solution is cryptography cryptography is encrypting decrypting and changing your data so that other person cannot read i'll give you an idea if you want to send ab and you want the destination to get ab you can not send it as ab you have to send it like xy this is encryption and the other part on the destination uh, machine will be decryption when you combine this encryption decryption it will be cryptography there are very various cryptographic techniques available protocol layering so this is the best idea to devise a technique to define a network using layers and protocols so there will be, the network is quite complex or the design can be very complex the best way to reduce this complexity is we can divide or define the network in a proper arranged and organized manner for example a stack of layers we can define or levels we can define and each one over another for example some party is there you can assign food to some person you can assign welcome to another person for example logistics can be given to other person you can give some you know bouquet etc work to some other person so you have divided your party and given task to some people now it is it will reduce the complexity of your work so this is the best way the protocol layering can can help so we need to organize in certain layers there are different uh, reference layer the prominent one and the most known ones are are, are iso osi layer and tcp ip layers and please remember they are not, they are only reference model one more thing you have to understand before you go to pro protocol layering is the number name contents and the function of each layer differ from network to network that is one network and another network they will be having different kind of number name contents and function right this is very important aspect okay so network to network it will differ but the whole idea is the layer concept is okay is no so layer is nothing but a virtual uh, say idea being given to you it's a virtual machine so they are offering every lower layer is offering some services to it their upper layer osi reference model tcp ip reference model again let me tell you they are reference model that is it is your responsibility as a network designer that you have to implement it now i'll give you an example if you have some idea about programming especially the object oriented programming here the concept of object is all about hiding the data you are making abstract data type you are making a capsule that is data gain encapsulation you are not exposing it so you are making a class you will write all the variables then inside this class you will have functions that is operations so what you are doing is you are making a class or you are making you are hiding content variable and function and then again you are uh, you know with different technique that is the public private protected you are trying to enforce the information hiding encapsulation and object oriented programming so the implementation is not uh, is is sometimes the the main um, the framework you give and the implementation is left over to the net to the developer here in the case it is the network designer okay
So these layers will be discussing at stretch. In protocol layering, we have different layers and these layers are basically based on certain concept and protocol, workability and the services they are offering. For example, network layer will be, we are, I am talking about two machines right now. So one machine say M1, other, other machine say M2. Now we have say layer N. So the nth layer will be talking to the nth layer of the second machine. This is what we see. And they will be say coming together for a protocol. That is there will be rules and convention. On the basis of these rules and convention, they will talk. They will convert, do the conversation. That is the protocol. That what will be the header size, what will be do, what is the packet size, all these. So protocol in all is an agreement between the communication parties. That is how are we going to communicate? What are the underlying aspects? Details. I'll give an example. If a girl meets a man, there may, will be different scenarios. If she is a women American lawyer, she will shake hand in a business meeting. But in a European, if a European princess is there or say an English princess is there, in a formal ball, you may get a kiss. So this depends on the protocol and the scenario and the situation. No American lawyer is going to kiss you for the first time. That is not a protocol. So here is a five layer network and here all the dashed line you see is what you see as the actual conversation. Layer 2 is talking to layer 2. Layer 3 will only talk to layer 3 because they have some common protocol. Layer 2 will not talk to layer 3 because they don't have a common protocol. But the actual communication is not horizontal but vertical. From layer 5 it will go to 4, 3, 2, 1 and through the physical medium it will again go up in the different machine from where layer 1 to layer 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So the layer 2 and layer 2 they are, they are friends because they are talking in same protocol. They are called peers. On a different machine, the same layers are called peers. These machines will be peers. Layer 4, layer 4, peers. And these peers can be, they can be anything. For example, they can be software processes, a software program. It can be hardware devices. It can even be human beings, mostly in application layer. They are peers. Please remember, no data is transferred directly from layer 2 to layer 2, layer 4 to layer 4, like this. So layer end to end, it doesn't happen. Each layer will pass the data and the other information, ancillary or control information, to the layer immediately below it, until it reaches the lowest layer. And finally, to the physical medium. Layer 2 will give it to layer 1. Layer 5, from layer 5 it starts. Layer 4, then it goes to 3, 2, 1. Finally, it will be given for final delivery. And this below layer, which is below the layer 1, is the actual physical medium, the wires you see, the transmission media you see. Here, the actual communication will take place. Right? So this is the actual coaxial cable it can be. It can be fiber, it can be transmitting of bits is happening. And the most important thing is between each layer, there will be an interface. That is, every layer junction is an interface. So this interface is most important because this interface is defining the operation and the services and the work and the offered services from the below layer to the upper layer. That is, layer 1, 2 will tell you what layer 1 is supposed to give to layer 2 the services it is going to offer, the operation it is going to offer. So this interface makes our life, life very easier because the protocol and implementation can only be changed here. 
without even bothering about changing any con anything about layers for example communication network can go to the satellite communication you just have to change the interfaces all these uh, protocol implementation can can be done in the interface layer rather than actual layer layer so when we are talking about protocol layering it can be iso osi layer it can be tcp ip layering scheme or the reference scheme the set of layers and protocol they all are combined and they are called as a collection is called as network architecture so a network architecture whichever you do we will be talking about the various network topology architectures etc so whatever you choose or as a network designer you are ought to give or you are supposed to give the specification of this architecture so that the actual implementer a person who may be writing network softwares or a person who is making a network hardware they can make it following and obeying and conforming to all the protocols so a set of layers and the protocols is called a network architecture the list of protocols used by certain system one protocol per layer is called protocol stack what i am trying to say here is for example we have a iso osi reference scheme we are using now we have seven layers here every layer and one protocol in this layer for example the the top layer it is saying we will use http likewise every protocol the every layer the protocol is defined so combination of this protocol along with this list or one protocol per layer this list of protocol is protocol stack now how does the communication is taking place in the layering scheme or the reference models tcp ip or the you know iso osi let us take a very general example so if you see here there are three layers the, this is one philosopher on the other side there is another philosopher these philosopher because they are on the same layer they are peers they are friends they want to talk but one of the uh, the philosopher he can only speak urdu and english the other one he only knows chinese and french so there is no common language between them so they will engage a translator or they will hire a translator now these two translator of different philosopher they are at layer 2 so they are peers because their whole work is translation now each translator will also have a secretary they will hire a secretary who will be actually sending the data now philosopher one wants to send a message for example he wants to send i like rabbits oryctholagus caniculus rabbit now he wants to just send i like rabbits this has to go to philosopher 2 how does it happen he will pass a message because he knows only english and urdu so he'll write in english and it will send it across this 2 3 interface layer 2 3 interface to his translator that is i like rabbits now the translators at level 2 or peer 2 they have already decided that we will be talking in the dutch language the lang their language spoken in netherland the holland so they change the message into some equivalent conigen leok like this i may not i may not be pronouncing it perfectly but this is what they finally decide and they write change now this choice of language is totally dependent on protocol two layer they can define hindi they can define say say any other language now because they have converted it to the dutch now they give it to the translator is giving it to the secretary the secretary is sending it now these level 1 secretary from both the side they have agreed upon that they will be sending it using fax they would have decided they will send it by say email or phone so the when the message arrives at the other secretary because there is a proper transmission 
bits transmission level. Now the secretary on the other side, philosopher two side, the the message it gets. Now it will be changed. It will be given to the translator from layer because the philosopher has to get either in in uh, say Chinese or French. So it is the work of the translator to convert this into French. Then only this French language can be given because the Dutch has to be converted into French. So. the conversation you can see that various parties are agreeing upon certain facts and then finally the communication is taking place each protocol is independent of another only the interfaces are changed for example the layer 2 they are translating they can change it into finnish they can change it into say hebrew or arabic it doesn't matter because finally it is layer 2 to, to decide what language they choose okay now coming to the first layer the secretaries they may decide we don't want to send it by fax we'll send it by email or telephone so this is the agreed upon protocol between them this is how the communication happens and i like rabbit is transferred to philosopher 2 now i'll show you the actual conversation how it ha happens in the scenario of network protocol layering iso osi layer or the tcp ip so there we have five layers five layer network now the first layer of the top most layer of the left hand side you can say the machine one it is sending a message called m there is a message now this message it it will be sent to layer 4 of that protocol uh, protocol layer so now the message at layer 4 the layer 4 will had add a header say h4 so it will contain contain the addresses where it has to go the sequence number if the packets are divided all these okay now this will be sent to layer 3 now layer 3 we have because there may be limitation on layer 3 that this is not the size this is the shorter size you can say so layer 3 will divide this message m into m1 and m2 m2 and it will add its own header h3 so m1 and m2 will have header see the earlier header was placed by 4 level 4 to the actual message so now the at layer 3 there is message already which is divided into m1 and m2 so the divided part m1 will have the h4 head, header from layer 4 and one more header is will be added for layer 3 and now it comes to layer 2 it will again add some header and trailer h2 is the header and there will be tail trailer same for message 1 and message 2 now this will be sent to the physical machine or physical sorry the communication path and where it goes there will be stripping off trimming will go on when it goes from layer 1 to layer 2 to layer 3 the layer 2 header work is done so here h2 will be removed when it goes from layer 3 to layer 4 layer 3 has already done with the header 3 so header 3 will be removed there will be only header 4 remain and finally there will be combination of message m and then it will be finally delivered to the actual layer 5 protocol pairing machines so the lower part or lower layer of protocol or lower protocols they are normally implemented in hardware or firmware so when you open the mobile you see that some message will come initial to your opening that is the firmware i'm talking connections and reliability this we are going to take in the next discussion till then thank you so much take care of yourself